It's uh, Mike Capuzzo, uh, and I graduated with an MFA in creative nonfiction writing in 2011. Jeff Goucher, the Master of Fine Arts in the Master of Fine Arts in, in uh, creative nonfiction, is absolutely the best program in the country for that that kind of thing for people who are journalists or writers and want to learn how to write narrative, long narrative magazine stories, uh, essays, books. Uh, excuse me. And uh, I've always been a fan of it, and I've noticed the incredible faculty that Patsy uh, Sims, the director, has assembled there. Tom French, Pulitzer Prize winner and best-selling author, and Dick Todd, who used to be editor of The Atlantic, uh, go on and on. It was really a transformative experience. I mean, you know, it's, it's really a wonderful thing uh, at 50, whatever I was then, uh, to feel like a student again, be a student again, and open your mind and your heart to all kinds of new things, and realize you get to... You don't have to drag through life with your, your constant set of pluses and minuses. You can actually try and improve, learn, grow. And I think anybody that does anything, if, if, that, if, you, if you're lucky enough in your life to approach it with a sense of confidence but total humility, you really can learn and be around other people who are in the same boat. So in, a, in an important way, um, I've, I really feel like I found my people in, the, in that program. And I don't know how many places or things can give you that. I guess distance learning is, it would fit roughly into that category, but it's really more specifically called low residency. And that's, a, it's an important distinction because it's not like a, 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 a um, you know, an online learning format uh, where you're not meeting people and seeing people. Uh, you go uh, for two weeks uh, in the summer to this, um, it, it's an incredible experience. I, I wish I told Patsy, can I sign up for the seven year PhD? You know, can we prolong this? I don't need this degree yet. Let's keep doing it. Uh, and you're basically in a dorm, this beautiful campus, right there on the Yellow Brick Road, with uh, uh, 50 students, 23 to 63, who range from, uh, you know, a woman from Portland who uh, was, got national acclaim for surviving by eating weeds off of corner sidewalks in Portland for two weeks, and is kind of a leading figure in the urban foraging movement, is a very talented writer, to a 63-year-old guy who is pretty much world famous in the uh, motor in the in the cycling business for having been a champion bicycler and a, a Lance Armstrong's biographer, uh, and is still it will go down in history as one of the leading writers and historians of of, bike, of the bicycle and also probably automobile. Uh, and so you have these people of all ages and all varieties of experience who are eat lunch, breakfast, dinner. And then there's something called study hall, which uh, I originally thought was going to be a very serious thing. Study hall is mandatory wine and cheese uh, from like 8 o'clock till midnight and probably later. And then it starts all over again. So what happens in two weeks, it's really the strangest phenomenon. Um, Dick Todd, who was uh, an editor, had his own imprint as, as an editor and is sort of a legendary figure and is taught in a lot of places, said he's never seen anything like it. And I certainly have never experienced anything like it. Because what happens is, I think you're around these people long enough to develop lifelong bonds, almost like you're on the show Island, all thrown together trying to survive, but you really find your people. And yet not, not long enough to start bitching and ripping each other apart, you know? So it's just, you really develop really tight bonds. And then you also have another residency for a weekend, and you keep going back for the summers. Uh, but the important distinction is, since it's writing, uh, the real work in the real world, like, is done long distance anyway. So at the time I entered, I'd already had one New York Times bestselling book and I was stuck. I, I couldn't, I, I could, I was finishing it, but very, very slowly, and it was a painful process. And I needed help. And I thought, what better place to get help? And Tom French helped show me that this would be a good situation for me, but like I said, it exceeded all my expectations. So, in essence, I had an editor in New York at Penguin, what is it, Gotham Penguin, Gotham Books, Penguin Publishing. And I had an editor in Baltimore, who was Tom, and then, and then Dick, and then, you know, others who were really great. Um, and uh, when you're writing a book, even in the age of, you know, you email your story or your book to someone or your chapters and they email it back, or more frequently, it was just sort of snail mail. You would print it out, they wanted to read it that way, and send it to them, and they would mark it out and you talk on the phone. But that's really no different from what you do when you're working with an editor in the real world. So it, it was a great, just a great program. You know, just to put it in context of how a great program like that can stretch you, uh, I'd already gone in there having written bizarre things that would seem maybe to already be a stretch. Like I had a book, a, a, a syndicated animal column, a humor column, humor books, uh, 
I'm a science writer, uh, I write about history. But I went in there and I realized, geez, I don't know so much. And that was what was exciting about it. Um, Adam Hotschild, who is a, writes for Mother Jones and a lot of other places, uh, and has done some great books, King Leopold's Ghost, he came to lecture. Uh, and his lecture was all about how to reorganize, how to play with time, how to organize chapters in a narrative book. And again, I think I'm pretty creative at that stuff. Never gave it a single thought, and I opened up a whole new world of possibilities, including new book ideas.